All right, here we go. Thanks for finding us. It's a DC Sports Huddle. We're sponsored by MGM National Harbor for the latest in Washington sports. Visit MGM National Harbor and experience a sports fan's paradise. George Wallace, Dave Preston, Rob Woodfork in the huddle. I'll start off mad once again this week. I just wanted a simple, so sim a simple, no, simple start to the NBA season. The Wizards started their season on Wednesday. I wrote a uh, preview on WTLP.com, which was read by several of my relatives. I was all fired up. And then this Dan Snyder stuff hits. And I'm going to where? Indianapolis, the home of Colts owner Jim Irsay. And yeah. I'm glad he spoke up and said what he said because he's the only one that has spoke up from the ownership uh, collection. Although it should be pointed out that no other owner, no other owner has said, you know, I didn't like what Jim Irsay said. Yeah, right. So I think the silence is deafening. It is richly ironic as someone who covered Jim Irsay's dad, Bob Irsay, when he moved the Baltimore Colts. I still remember the press conference. A story broke that they're moving to Arizona. And Bob Irsay was so mad that he flew into Baltimore and allegedly he might have had a few drinks before he held a press conference. First class. And, and be, well, no, it was a private plane, the BWI. And he, he, I can still picture him saying, Don Shaver's my friend, the poor governor at governor, the time, yeah. and saying he's not moving his team to Arizona. And he was right. He moved it to Indianapolis. So <laughs> In the middle of the night. I, I know. Yeah. I've, I've, I've drifted off subject, off topic. There's a Packers game. Taylor Heineke with his hair on fire is back as quarterback. I just had to get that off my chest. That Can, can we just go one week? No. And, or can we just... I, I, I'm done with this. We and, can't. I mean, we have no. three quality storylines for this episode. Did you have Ursa on your pregame show? Not nearly by enough time to no. delve into all of them the way that, you know, because, I mean, each of them is, like, episode worthy. You know, the Wizards opening the season the way they did, the Dan Snyder stuff, the, uh, the quarterback change, because God knows we've seen a million of those in Washington <laughs> over the last 35-plus right. years. Um but, yeah, man, look, I, I guess we should just go into the, the commanders here because, I mean, this is – I don't even want to say it's a big game because I feel like their season's over anyway. But just the quarterback change, this doesn't feel like it's temporary. It doesn't feel like Heineke's going in there just to fill in until Wentz is back. I feel like we've seen the last of Carson Wentz. Am I crazy? I, yeah, no, not crazy, but I don't – what happens if Taylor comes in and goes 0-4? Oh, they're going to get one win because that's just the way it is. They'll get one. Yeah. Okay. What happens if he goes one and three? You're not gonna bring Carson Wentz back? He's gonna fall under the seventy percent. Carson snaps. Wentz went one and four. So I mean, I understand that, but I, go based I, on record. How about this? I guess it depends how how they look, how they go one and three, or how they go two. Now you go four and zero, oh, fine. Yeah. Different story. But right. if the offense is moving, before. if the offense is moving, and you see the excitement of Taylor Heineke, but look, guys. And, and I love the fans. God bless the fans. Whatever's left of them. <laughs> the Taylor Heineke is going to be the savior. They're going to the Super Bowl now that Taylor Heineke's back. We know what Taylor Heineke is. Yes, he's familiar with the offense. Yes, he has a little more excitement. He gets out of pocket. He moves around. But he's just, he's a backup quarterback. Right. Well, but I like his comment that he's using his hips now. And, yes. and he compares it to a golf swing. Because yeah, he's that, played a lot of golf. Yeah. Right. So no I never, no I word if Chubbs Peterson was the one who helped him <laughs> with that. Right. You know, well, I never it's thought, all in the hips. Yeah, well, I never thought he'd use Shakira and, and uh, <laughs> Taylor Heineke in the same sentence because she had a, a hip song. Lie, right? Apparently, hips don't lie. Uh, but Taylor Heineke is, is just a great story. And I think everybody is rooting for Taylor Heineke yeah. because there's a Taylor Heineke right. in every one of us that feels like we were slighted from something along the way and we're getting a, sh a chance to shine. It's unfortunate, and as he said it, that he gets this opportunity because of Carson Wentz's injury. But what, what I love and we all know, uh, he is going to go in and he's going to play with the attitude yeah. like, I'm going to keep this job for the next 10 years. I don't think that's going to happen, no. but he, he's going to make it fun and you, you're going to appreciate the competitiveness. The competitiveness that uh, that he used when he dove for that touchdown yeah. in the playoff game. But that's, that's why, but that's I, why I think he's going to be the starter moving forward because the team responds to him in a way, and they said all the right things with Carson Wentz, but it seems like the team responds to uh, Heineke in a way that sort of lifts the, the you know the level of play or at least the competitive nature in and because which and it's because of the way he, it's because of who he is he's an under like you said yeah. underdog guy he gets out leaves everything on the on the field but am i crazy to think that like you know that this is not it's not the savior to the season no no no, no, no. not at all not at all or, okay, or the phrase look i mean if cooper rush had had continued to put up 400 yard passing 
games or, or whatever. Well, Not he, that he ever did. I'm yeah. just saying. If he, had, he the <laughs> right. point, my, my point being yeah, is everybody. that suddenly you really have a controversy. Sure. Right. Did anybody think Dak Prescott eventually was not coming back? Correct. It was not a real quarterback right. controversy. And I think it, it, the same applies here. I think Taylor Heineke, unless he puts up crazy numbers mm -hmm. and doesn't throw the ball away and they keep winning, well, then, of course, you don't make the change. But I don't think that's that's going to happen. Well, I think even if there was no injury to Carson Wentz, there'd still be they, they would still be talking about the quarterback. I think the offense has scored, what, 30 points over the last three weeks? And so this was an attack that they had four touchdowns against Jacksonville, four against Detroit. And then the, the pickings have been slim the last few weeks. And you wonder, you know, what's going to happen with this attack, no, no matter who the quarterback is. $28 million for well, Carson Wentz. He was not going to pull him after five, whatever, no. how many games we are. $28 well, million. Yeah. And you're on, <laughs> on, on camera, on face, that this is the guy you wanted. If you pull Carson Wentz now at two and four, if, with the injury, if it wasn't an injury, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about it because it's what's happening. But then Ron's out there. I mean, that's a huge you're, – you're admitting that this is – Yeah, but did, Indy gave up more for him. Right. They had way right. more invested well, in yeah, him. Yeah, true. And, so, there, and they pulled the plug after one year. So it's like – I feel like Washington – They say what we will about Rivera. It feels like he's not going to play somebody just because of their draft status or how much they're making or any of that stuff. I agree, but this was his quarterback, and yeah. this was his. This is different for, for me. Yeah, that's what he said. And look, today's Dave's right about uh, one thing, only one thing. No, one. You're, you're right about several <laughs> things. But something you said before the season yeah. that Carson Wentz will put up great numbers, uh, but it'll be in come from behind time when you right. try to and, chase. And, yeah. and that's and that's certainly happened already. Uh, this season, but scoring is actually tough in, in the NFL. Uh, the, uh -huh. the case in point, last time Taylor Heineke and the Commanders played the Packers, they had 430 yards of total offense mm -hmm. and only 10 points. 10 points. Yeah. So so it, it's a similar problem to what we've experienced even with, with uh, this uh, is, Carson Wentz. It, this is an offense that can beat itself, and we have seen them beat themselves. The number is actually 47 points over the last four games for the mm -hmm. Bergen Eagles, so that's 12 points a game. That does not get you out of drafting first or second. You know, th 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 those are bad offensive numbers. I know that Jahan Dotson has been unavailable, and he might not be available this Sunday. I know the offensive line has been held together with duct tape or paper clips or choose your adhesive, but this offense was not working the last four weeks. Who knows? I think Taylor Heineke is going to provide a spark. Every new quarterback prov provides a spark. It's just like with every coaching fire and we've seen it in college football uh, georgia tech won two straight after they fired their coach wisconsin won a couple games after they fired coach their coach it's like the dead cat bounce they like to say i think i think maybe we get a quarterback change bounce perhaps this sunday is it sustainable i don't think so but i definitely think that you're going to see a different fire on the commander's side of the football field this Sunday than you had the last couple of weeks. I think it was best stated, uh, in, of course, I could say this all the time about Twitter, but uh, somebody <laughs> tweeted that, you know, you, you showed the touchdown pass from Wentz uh, to Diami Brown uh, and basically said, yeah, we're not getting that from Correct. Taylor Heineke. Yeah. And that's well, about, he's, wait a minute, he's using his hips now. Well, so right. He I mean, he, yeah, so, 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 no. he could, so he could throw it 30 yards instead of 25. But <laughs> but well, no, man, look, but you're, you're going to lose. Uh, with Wentz, he is more talented, and we've talked about this before. He's a more talented player. Right. You're going to be able to, and we, we can put this in relationship terms so that people can understand. Carson Wentz is that beautiful girl. She's so fine. But then she's got drama. There's always drama, and it always ends badly because it's toxic. And then with Heineke, it's like, you know what? She's a real cool chick. I can watch football with her. Like, we can kick it. Like, she'll do some beer burps or whatever. She, it may be not the softer side of Sears, but you know what? It's a more healthy relationship, and I can get further. So that's how I feel about this sort of, uh, you know, the dichotomy between two quarterbacks. So you may be able to be more competitive in games with Heineke, even though he is not the, in, in, in the case of both, uh, neither one of them is the long term. Neither one of them is marriage material. <laughs> so just the one that's not toxic, the one that's not going to set you back in life is the one you want. And that is Taylor well, we've Heineke. We've, been, we've done this before. I know oh, that, man. but this is a bridge. This is a bridge to get you to the office. How many bridges are you going to get? How many bridges are you going to build? It's the Bay it's, Bridge, and, man. And don't, and don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying I believe in Heineke. I've said all along. I think he's mediocre. He's whatever. But at the same time, I, I, I was not high on Carson Wentz at all. And we've seen 
he has the tendency, like he can get you that big play, but he can also shoot you in the foot with the turnovers. And I feel like Heineke, and look, they always talk about they know what to do. He was talking the other day, like he knows I can't have 15 interceptions like I did mm -hmm. last season. So it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to do it. Right. So I'm looking forward to seeing if he can do it. And if he can't do it, and look, it, uh, He's not going to take all the killer sacks like Wentz does. It's not even about interceptions and throwing and all of that. I'll yeah. give you that. His mobility, his ability. They're not going to take nine sack games I'll with, give, I'll give you that. with Heineke I, in there, and I think yeah. that that's going to be the difference. I think with this offensive line, he's probably better suited because, yes, yeah. Carson Wentz can hit that 40, 50-yard you know, bomb, yeah. but he's it, with the line the way it is set up right now, you don't have the time yep. to use that arm. So I, right. And also... I think we've seen the the pocket collapse multiple times this you know since week one. They're tied for uh, allowing the most sacks per mm -hmm. game in the NFL, and I think you need a guy who can run for his life. Sadly, better than a guy with a better arm. Yeah, yeah no, I think small. he's dangerous because uh, the NFL in professional sports in general, they, these players are so schooled mm -hmm. and they study so much. Well, how do you study for Taylor Heineke? Yeah. Because he probably doesn't know what he's doing half the time. So right. then, how <laughs> how can the defense know? With the hips, they're, they're like, wait a minute, I didn't see that in the film session, as they, they say the film session. But yeah. you know, it does what smacks, and, and this is the problem and it's not Ron Rivera's fault or or whatever and, and maybe I'm wrong on this but the it, the NFL in some ways is is become like the NBA where you need a certain level of player at, at a position or it, it's look the Ravens won a Super Bowl with what Trent Dilfer Trent right Dilfer. I mean look at who uh, the Washington football team once upon a time mm -hmm. uh, Jay Schrader or, or uh, I'm sorry Doug Williams mm -hmm. I, I remember interviewing God bless Doug Williams a very talented guy but I remember interviewing him when he was with the Arizona Outlaws at the USFL <laughs> so that's where his career went ups and downs Mark Rippon was was not a Hall of Fame uh, quarterback but now it seems unless you have that tier one mm -hmm. quarterback whoever you want to put in that tier uh, at some point, you're going to end up out and of the Actually, place. what's interesting about the NFL right now is even if you have that tier one quarterback, it's still not a guarantee because, I mean, Russell Wilson is yeah. really bad in yeah. Denver. <laughs> really I don't bad. think anybody saw that coming. No. No. And you look at uh, Tom Brady's been struggling. It looks like he's not even all in on this season. So it's like you, you, know, you need to have that tier one guy, sure. But it looks like nowadays, like the, the scoring is down league wide. Like, you know, now it needs to be, you need to have defense. You need to be able to run the ball. Yeah, but in defense of Tom Brady, yeah. I can I can speak from experience. A Brazilian supermodel, supermodel breakup is, is a tough thing <laughs> and, to deal with. And you can you can speak from experience, you're at Robert Kraft's wedding too, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I know. It just, I was, well, well, how about I, this for I, the I, quarterbacks who season game. game. Otherwise, I would have been, you been yeah, hanging yeah. with Robert Kraft. Bob, he understood. He understood. Same understood. town. We were both in New York on Friday night. He understood. But how about this for quarterback seasons who have gone sideways? Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay, comes to FedEx Field Sunday. They've lost two in a row. Yep. Uh, you've got Tom Brady, whose uh, team is now 500. Russell Wilson, who has won a Super Bowl. He, he for he is whatever reason I don't know if it's the coaching or lack thereof with Nathaniel Hackett, but that oh, has bad. not gone right. He's and really even Lamar Jackson, who has just had an incredible first couple of weeks, they're 500 now too. Yeah. Here's what I will, here's here's the other key. I do think that you will see Scott Turner be able to call a little more with Taylor Heineke. Because he knows the offense. He knows so for the last well. three years. Yeah. And look, I a lot of a lot of this stuff is I put you you have to put on your offensive coordinator too and how you adapt to the players strengths and, and how you call a game and they're knowing their limitations. There's, so I think you will see maybe a little bit now, maybe not as much as the deep stuff because of obviously right. his arm, but maybe you see a little more. And but it's also gonna depend too if Dotson's out, Deami Brown hasn't practiced all week. Yeah. You know, if the weapons are down, too. Right. Yeah, but I, I've got the formula for victory. Oh. The, the, the uh, commanders... Oh, my. Right. The, no, no, the yeah. commanders, <laughs> and this has been a, a sore point this season, the commanders' defense has to come up with some takeaways Correct. against the Packers. Give Taylor Heineke a short field to work with. Yep. He dives in the end zone, does whatever. He loves to and, dive. And they, they find a way <laughs> to win. Give him a short field to work with 
uh, and not 90 yards to try to, to lead a team to victory. Are you, you calling it? Are you calling it? I'm calling it. I'm saying, I'm saying if the he defense. Loves Heineke. If, <laughs> no, everyone loves Taylor Heineke. You can't help but love yeah. Taylor Heineke. I said everybody has he did. a little he did say Taylor Heineke we uh, tell, yeah. in you, uh, in us. Somewhere. Somewhere. Was, I somewhere. mean, we, we were my all, left foot. Everyone First of all, Heineke there. is not the drink I have in me right now. No, but, but everybody watching is has been dissed or, yeah. or, or uh, you know, not yeah. given the full opportunity or credit or whatever. Or had to fight a little uh, bit harder, and and yeah. you know, I I think everyone appreciates. I mean, it. it's a it's the it's a great story, but it's you know it's a it's a three year old story that right. we, we keep going back to. Him now you need year. to be able to play. Now you need to yeah. right. Nobody and, cares about Kurt Warner did, bagging groceries less than until he, he did, wins the Super Bowl. He did say that you know what difference between last year and this year the experience. You started fifteen games last year. That's a big deal. You also got to learn a little bit from Wentz and as the backup going in this year. So, and as he did say from Fitz last year, also. Mm -hmm. So, he has been able to learn. He's doing the hips thing, like you mentioned, playing a lot of golf. Um, so we'll see. All right, he's All got right. another shot. Let's, so yeah. let, let's let, let's let, let's pick the game. I'm just going to say <clears throat> real quick that they need to take the game out of Heineke's hands. If he, if you need to be able to run That's the ball. That's what I said. Yeah, you need to be able to run the ball. You need to be able to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. But more importantly, the thing that I'm most scared of with Green Bay is that two-headed monster that they have at running back. Washington has been really bad at stopping the run this year, giving up 6.4 yards per carry. If Green Bay gets a lead and then they're running on you, like that's going to be curtains. That's going to be game over. So uh, I, I, I'm not picking Washington to win. I'm going to say Green Bay wins 28 to 20. Jay hey, Preston. I've got uh, Green Bay 25, Washington 18. Okay. This, you would think this would be a Aaron Rodgers get right game after losing to the Jets. I think it but is. But then you would have thought last week. He doesn't week, have weapons either. No. You would have thought last week was. And he's dealing with a thumb injury. He, didn't, yeah. he hasn't practiced this week. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Green Bay is still going to come in and win the game. But I'll, I can be close. I think Taylor Heineke makes it exciting. Yeah. I'll go 27-23. Yeah. I okay. think what hurt the Packers last week, second only to the West Coast team playing at 1 p.m., is the team coming back from London and not getting a bye week. That's 3-1 and one against the numbers so far this season. Okay. All right. You knew and, we were getting a time reference. Why, Time's up reference. Why 25-18? Because uh, I believe uh, this is the guy who picks to, three times really for them know? every year. Really I, I, I think they're going to chase points. I think you're going to get a, a touchdown with a two point conversion late in the uh, game to make it 23 18, and then a safety makes it 25. Score a gun. Yeah, write, write that down. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I asked. Well, I'm going to go. That's his your fault. The commanders are going to win. I'm going to stick. I believe that the commanders' defense will come up with the takeaways, uh, they'll give Heineke a short field. Uh, to work with, and uh, to the point, yeah, you get a quarterback bounce, and this will be the week that, that they bounce back. And I'm also just tired of picking against the commander, so why <laughs> and not? And they're giving away seat cushions right. this week. No. That's, oh, gosh. How about that? All right. Are they going to throw them on the field uh, like back uh, in the day? Geez. With that audible line of scrimmage, any other thoughts, comments? Reactions. Uh, I, I think anything? we, uh, yeah, I think we can touch briefly on the Dan Snyder uh, right. controversy. Uh, I do think that it is uh, notable and it is important that Jim Mersey spoke out. Like at first, I was just like, all right, well, this is Jim Mersey. He's a bottom tier owner. Who cares what he thinks? I would rather hear from Amara. I would rather hear from a Rooney or somebody, or Jerry Jones, who used to be uh, Snyder's boy. But I think the, uh, you know, by it being Ursay it puts pressure on some of those more respected guys to speak up. And I think it also speaks to if, you know, the, the well-respected guys, sure, they're not going to like Snyder in all right. likelihood. Right. The fact that a, an owner who's had some troubles of his own and has served a suspension and has had some issues was the one to speak out sort of speaks to, hey, maybe there really is 24 owners that it's, will vote this guy out. It, but it even calculated. still... But even still, even if you get that 24, it's just the beginning. As exciting as it is to start to feel like, oh, boy, something's about to happen, Snyder is going to take this to court. He's going to make oh, yeah. it nasty and drag out, and we just need to be prepared for that. I it's going to get uglier. It's going to be ugly before it gets good. It's your closest closest than it's ever been, and it's definitely calculated that Ursay walked right out, walked to the media, and said it. He obviously right. didn't do that rogue. So right. that, to me, is a big deal. And to Dave's point before, not one on a – Spoke out the next yep. day at the meetings. It was like, whoa, whoa, hey, that this, you know. Yeah. No, a rumor you, isn't a rumor that doesn't die, and this one's alive. <laughs> no, and, and I think also the uh, they are this NFL investigation either is taking long because who doesn't want billable hours, and that right. could be part of the reason why, <laughs> or uh, they know that that and and it, we do live in a country where you have legal rights. They've got to find. 
uh, some way to to say we got you on this mm -hmm. and that's against what we're about and you're out of the league or uh, apparently the 24 votes so uh but it, I, it's not going to come until this investigation is over whenever it's over yeah. um but i think the fact that that finally you had an owner say something yeah uh i think is significant and i i agree with george i don't think uh jim ursay just walked out and thought well you know what mm -hmm. i'm gonna make headlines gather around everybody <laughs> right, right. then i want to take the pacers uh, off right. the front page and anything yeah, happens. Yeah. all right stick we, it to dave yeah, yeah right. they're, 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 i was going to bring up we have a pickleball star in our area but i'll bring that up next week next week, something, next week. Right. it's definitely something it is number one ranked player in the world all right uh the dc sports Tunnel is always or as we like to call it the dan snyder therapy session is sponsored by <laughs> mgm national harbor the latest in washington sports visit mgm national harbor and experience the sports fans paradise we thank you break, break.